Folks, what are the most iconic plays in fighting games? I feel like the Daigo Perry comes to mind. Evo Moment 37. Combo Fiend maybe landing the bionic arm. That's a classic. Tokido landing the raging demon and then doing the raging demon pose in real life in front of the projector. These are all classic moments. But for me, one that I'll never forget is right here. Watch this Ryu. Yeah, the whiffed jabs. <laughs> Even though that may not be the highest level of play, it's certainly iconic. So the match we're taking a look at here is Gandhi versus FSP. And when I did my video analyzing Jobin's Ryu, a lot of people in the comments told me you have to analyze Gandhi versus FSP. And I, I've been a little bit hesitant to do this because I feel like a great video covering this match already exists done by Core A Gaming. But I feel like no one has really gone in depth on the little things that are happening on both sides that I think explain why this match goes the way it does and why this ended up being so iconic. So, you know, this definitely isn't a match between like the best players in the world. It's a match between pretty normal players, to be honest, probably pretty similar to some of you guys at home, similar to guys like me who like fighting games, but aren't like top eight finishing players in a lot of tournaments. Uh, I think this match can be very relatable and maybe remind us of uh, certain times we've all had ourselves in fighting games. So it can be fun for that reason. So we're going to go through, we're going to analyze what's happening and uh, we'll hopefully be able to talk a little bit about how you can avoid being the subject of a meme video like this in your own exploits. And guys, if you like these breakdown analysis videos, it seems like you guys really liked the Jobin one, so I'm super happy to see that. And if you like this one as well, uh, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the like button. That's basically the only way that I know what type of content is connecting with you guys that I should make more of. So uh, if you hit a bunch of likes on this, I'll keep doing these analysis. But uh, let's jump in right off the bat here. We got, the names are, are backwards actually. It's gonna be Gandhi on the left playing Ryu versus FSP on the right. We can already see the repeated mass jabs are coming into play. And we're also already seeing getting away with dragon punches due to a bad attempted punish here from FSP. So if we go into the game real quick, I'm gonna try to explain this first sort of thing that's going wrong for FSP, which is that I feel like he has a small set of go-to bread and butter B&B combos, and he doesn't really have much freedom for combos outside of that so he clearly has in his head that here's the punish if i block a dragon punch i'm always going to do heavy punch into galactic tornado look it's 220 damage it's a lot of stun it is a very solid dp punish combo and that's all well and good but in the real world sometimes things go wrong sometimes you block a dragon punch at like far range and then look we can't get close heavy punch anymore all of a sudden we're panicking our, our bread and butter dragon punch punish isn't gonna work so it's good to have different punish combos for different things. You know, obviously when you're starting out, you're only going to have a couple of B&B combos. But once you start to improve at the game, it's really important to have something available for these weird situations that happen all the time. For example, Rufus, he can do like far standing heavy kick. That's going to that's gonna punish all the time. It's going to punish any of Ryu's dragon punches, no matter what. So you can go for that. You can do something like crouching medium kick into EX Tornado if you're okay with spending a meter, that's fine too. Uh, or you can just do the most basic thing, which is just sweep. Sweep is perfectly fine, especially in Street Fighter 4, where you have all kinds of knockdown shenanigans that you can do with dive kick and stuff like that. So definitely uh, a better option than just only having one punish combo and then not really having anything locked and loaded for when that's not going to work. So back to the match here, you can see the light dragon punch is blocked too far out of range to get the punish. So instead he gets hit with this jab into DP. That's going to hurt. Now Gandhi is actually backing away. This is unconventional to see someone knock you down in the corner and then jump back to get more space to set up a fireball. Not normal gameplay. Most players would pressure in this situation. So we can maybe see that Gandhi playing not in the traditional way that you might be expecting if you're expecting your opponent to play in the right way. Oftentimes playing in the wrong way can catch you off guard and actually beat you if you're not ready for it. So again, jumping back to get more space to throw fireballs. Definitely not the right way to play, but if it's working, then here's some more of the classic, by the way, a nice whiff punish with the fireball. And then we're just mashing jab to try to get some space to jump back and throw more fireballs. 
jump roundhouse into crouch roundhouse and here fsp goes to the ex messiah kick fully invincible so that's going to go through all these buttons that gandhi is pressing a lot but you can see the meter economy here three meters to zero meters not what you want to see if you're FSP here, especially with this life disadvantage. And again, I think we can see here, not ready for a punish on this Dragon Punch. You can see it whiffs. Instead, he goes for a dive kick, not a true punish. It looks like he beats out a throw there. And then going for the hard link there, standing light kick into close heavy punch. That is actually a one frame link, so Gandhi manages to pull it off this time, but let's see if he's going to keep going for that. There you can see a re-jump after the dive kick, so this is common stuff as Rufus. So this is something I talked about a lot in my Jobin analysis video, is the power of crouch tech in Street Fighter 4. You can see what I'm doing here is I feel the gap after the dive kick, and then I press throw tech while crouching. If there is no throw, you get a crouching light kick, which is not that dangerous of a move, but it can be punished. So this is a super common strategy for Rufus, where the opponent is gonna feel the gap, they're gonna press throw tech, but Rufus doing a small dive kick is gonna punish that cleanly, and he can get a combo off it. So FSP is coming into this match with that game plan in mind. He's gonna go for the crouch tech beat here by doing a second dive kick, a re-jump, but Gandhi is just pressing DP. So this is actually another mistake that I think a lot of players fall into is you have a strategy coming into a match, which is good. I think you should always have a game plan or a strategy when you're coming into a match. You should have something you're planning to do, but you should pay attention to what the opponent does. And if they're not sort of playing the way that you expect, you're going to have to change up your strategy. So uh, FSP really needs to change his strategy to baiting dragon punches and not baiting throw techs because... Gandhi is not really throw teching at all. I don't think he's concerned about throws throughout this entire match. So he gets hit by the DP here. Now on just a little bit of HP and okay, that is crazy. This is another thing. No one, no one is doing this. I feel like I'm, I'm just repeating after myself from the Jobin video, but jump in medium punch directly into light dragon punch and it works out. And so you might tell yourself, you know, okay, I just got unlucky. That is kind of unlucky because that, that's a crazy thing to go for. You would never expect that. Nine times out of ten, you would actually just block it and get a punish. It's just you randomly kind of got hit by that second hit. So you might think you lost that round just due to kind of bad luck and seeing something that you didn't expect. But really, he lost that round because he had no health anyway. Like, all the mistakes throughout the match added up to him just having a little bit of health and then losing to that random situation. So... Uh, yeah, it's it's easy to chalk this one up to I should have won that round, but but really you lost the round by making all these mistakes earlier. So that's round one to Gandhi looking good with this Ryu. And you can see also the different sort of uh, feelings between the two players. This is something that's going to happen a lot. This is Gandhi on the right. He doesn't seem too bothered. He seems like he's just chilling, but FSP is going to be getting continually more tilted as the match goes on so that's something we'll talk about a little bit more in the future but there's a nice anti-air ex dragon punch from gandhi oh my gosh all right yep jump roundhouse crouch roundhouse jump roundhouse crouch roundhouse jumping back to set up more fireballs and just mashing exdp during the opponent's combos i mean you may as well if they're not gonna check it if they're not gonna block it you may as well just do it and there's a jump in whiff and the crouching medium punch into EXDP is going to connect. Anteering with some jabs, but gets hit with another EX Messiah kick. But again, the meter economy not looking too good for FSP here. Less than two meters. Gandhi with a little over two meters and the life lead. So, okay, it looked like he was looking for a cross cut DP there. This time, FSP was ready with the sweep. So that's a good adaptation. Just doing meaty sweep, which is maybe a little bit questionable when you see the opponent doing this many dragon punches. I feel like you shouldn't be sticking out an attack on their wake up, but it works out this time. Jumping back to set up more fireballs or just do full screen Tatsu. That's fine too. Setting up fireballs. FSP's landing on the fireballs. Gets air to air by jab, but there's another EX Messiah to go through everything. Here comes the Ultra. Gets blocked and punished with a sweep. So the commentators actually point out here. Yeah, that he could have jumped. So this would be something good for FSP to know is not just what are my good punishes on block. But what can I do if I can just avoid the ultra altogether? So these super specific punishes for various moves that aren't just your, you know, block dragon punches, these are really going to matter and make a huge difference in how much damage you're getting throughout the match.
So you can see here that if FSP did have the optimal punish for this ultra, he would be very, very close to winning this round. He'd probably be like one hit away. Oh, wow. But instead, he goes for EX Messiah, gets beat out by the EX DP, and I don't know what he was pressing on Wake Up. He got Reversal Indicator, so it was some kind of special move. Maybe EX Messiah, and he missed the EX, so he got Normal Messiah. Who's to say? But you should definitely not be pressing here unless it's an Invincible Reversal because Gandhi is pressing all the buttons in the world. You should just block it out, in my opinion. So game one goes to Gandhi in this two out of three set. You can see the tilt starting to set in, but FSP is going to make some good adaptations here. So I'm going to point a lot of these out. I don't want you guys to pay attention to these so that you can try to get better at adapting in your own matches. So you can see there, you might be wondering, why does he just do four jabs here? So a really good player would be able to confirm off this raw jump in straight into standing fierce or maybe, you know, light kick, heavy kick target combo or something. But confirming off of a one hit jump in, it's it's fairly difficult. I would say a lot of players, I would not blame them for not wanting to go for a hit confirm like that in a match. So instead, FSP does jabs. And so the thing about how jabs work in this game is it is possible for Rufus to do multiple jabs into... EX Galactic Tornado, but is very hard because the jabs actually have to link. So you need to have a full gap between the end of one jab into the next, or else you're actually not going to be allowed to cancel into that tornado. So you can see if I press the jabs too fast here, I can't cancel them into tornado. So this is a very hard link. This is actually a one frame link. If you don't nail the link, you're not going to be allowed to special cancel. So this is a one frame link. And unlike light kick into heavy punch, that link is very easy to plink, which is a trick that lets you make a one frame link into a two frame link. But you can't actually plink light punch unless you do select button plinking, which I'm not going to get into here. So anyway, this is a true one frame link. And I feel like this is the next sort of trap that I feel like intermediate players fall into, which is you assume that you're gonna land your training mode combos every time, right? You can land this combo, let's say 90% of the time in training. You assume that means you're gonna land it 90% of the time in a match, but that is definitely not the case, especially if you're not super experienced in tournaments. There's gonna be nerves. There's gonna be people yelling. So it's going to be really, really hard to land these super hard combos. So you have to know that, especially if you're playing an opponent like Gandhi, who likes to mash out reversals in the middle of combos. Maybe it's better to just go for something easy. So here you can see, yeah, the jump fierce, four jabs, no cancel, unfortunately. Blocks the DP, does get the close heavy punch this time because that was a heavy punch DP. And once again, we see the whiff DP. He goes for the dive kick counter and it actually does hit. And this time, he does EX Messiah through the Ultra. Once again, he could have jumped. He could have jumped and gotten a meterless 30%. So again, the knowledge, if he knew the optimal Ultra Punish, he'd be in a much better spot. But things are looking good for FSP here. Jumps in and actually just blocks there, perhaps expecting. Once again, we can see another combo drop. He was going for a tough link off of close light kick. And again, not always going to hit those hard combos when the pressure is on, guys. All right, whiffing sweep. The players are playing some patient footsies now. Doesn't manage to get an anti-air. The jump in medium punch. Air to air with the jump roundhouse. Could Gandhi actually be bringing it back this round? Look at the anti-air far roundhouse. Ooh, EX Messiah blocks the DP, though, and just goes for the safe punish, and you can really see the nerves. Look at the reaction from both players here. He gives him a thumbs up. He's like, nice. Meanwhile, FSP is absolutely mauling, so uh, this is another factor that I want to point out is going to be the emotional aspect of the game. You might think that you're going to be a cold and calculated combo machine in all your matches, but sometimes emotions do come into play, and that's something that takes a lot of practice to get good at managing. So here in round two of game two, no punish on the block Tatsu. I'm pretty sure Rufus can punish that a few ways, but does get the big punish on the DP. There's another blocked EX DP, another big punish. Let's bait a third time. Very nice. So here you can see FSP has made the adaptations, even just walking back to half screen there uh, to probably avoid the ultra. I think he was expecting wake up ultra. Oh, the whiffing jabs. Iconic. Iconic. We absolutely love to see it. The whiffing jabs. 
punishes with a throw there, unfortunate, which means he's not going to get the kill, but there's another punish on the whiff DP. Okay, it's one to one, guys. Oh, man. I really feel like James, FSP, James, James, despite the rage that you're seeing right now, <laughs> FSP actually made all the right adaptations in game two. I think that that was a great example of, you know, seeing how your opponent is playing, changing your game plan. That's exactly what I said we need to see. You can't just run your game plan if it's not working. You have to change the game plan. That's exactly what FSP did. But is Gandhi going to adapt back? That's the question. This is game three for all the marbles. I feel like that guy on Boomerang we were watching last night. Oh, he's going to continue to Dragon Punch. That's for sure. You can see the dive kick hit high on the body, which means that uh, Rufus is not going to be able to combo off this. So that's why he goes for the Dragon Punch. Maybe he knew, or maybe he was just pressing it either way. Regardless, it worked. Oh, neutral jumping, going again for the re-jump. So like I said, I feel like this is a little bit of just going back to the old game plan. I don't think re-jumping is going to work on Gandhi because he's not throw teching. Never, ever. Okay, that was actually not a true punish, but he does get away with going for the sweep there. Oh, air-to-air -air jab. I like to see that once again, missing the link after the jabs. Those one-frame links, very hard, and he goes for a one-frame link again there. So remember what I was saying with how you shouldn't just have like two or three bread and butter combos and have that be all you do? Obviously, when you're first starting out, that's all you're going to have. But once you start to get better and become an intermediate player, it's good to have multiple levels of difficulty of combos as well. Have some stuff that you've practiced where if it's a situation where you know you need to land this, you can't risk a drop, just have something easy. All right, so wake up EX Messiah. And once again, he's pressuring on wake up. I don't know. I kind of feel like FSP is getting tilted to the point that he's doing his original game plan again not doing the new and improved game plan that's designed to beat his opponent's play style. So let's see. Ooh, air to air. And there's the EX Messiah goes through. It looked like an actual throw attempt there. I like that. The crouch fierce to punish the with DP. That was some good on the fly adaptation there. So you can hear at this point, the commentators are getting a little bit uh, exasperated with FSP's lack of anti-air, but I understand. I understand. I think that when you're watching from the outside, anti-airing seems like the easiest thing in the world, right? You just wait for the opponent to come to you and then you just react. That's all you have to do. But uh, something that I feel like is very often discussed in fighting games right now is the mental stack. The more different things that your opponent is threatening you with that you're having to think about, the harder it's going to be to react with an anti-air. So if all of a sudden you're thinking, okay, is he going to throw a fireball? Is he going to do a random dragon punch? Is he going to do a random full screen Tatsu? Is he going to charge focus attack to try to eat one of my pokes? You're thinking about five or six different things and you're kind of worried about all of them. You're not going to have the reactions to anti-air the opponent when they jump. So I think that's exactly the problem that FSP is having here. He's so fully in like block and punish mode. Don't get hit by DPs. Don't get hit by this. Don't get hit by that. That he's not going to be sitting there waiting for these jump ins. So you can see that's why he's taking the block. Unfortunately... But let's see if he can still bring this round back. Ooh, Gandhi is going to trade with the Tatsu there. Crazy stuff there. The whiffed jump in, lands, crouching jab into DP. I don't know why that worked. I have no explanation for that, but it worked. Let's get hype. He's got the head in the hands. Things are really starting to get out of hand here. All right. Jump roundhouse, crouch roundhouse. By the way, can Rufus punish that? Let's test. I feel like Rufus must get a punish here. Let's see. Oh, we're, we're going to be too far for crouching medium kick? Okay, maybe it's going to be harder than I thought. Let's try sweep. Okay, wait, I think that was a real punish. I'm, pr Yeah, I mean, I, I have him down backing, right? Yeah, 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 that, that's a real punish. Okay, let's see if it works from like max range. Let's see. Oh, it does. So yeah, that's a guaranteed punish there. So that's another thing that... You know, when you're learning your matchups, especially Ryu, one of the most common characters, it's good to know what's every move that you can punish on block. Because if he was punishing those sweeps, he'd be getting a lot more damage. Oh my god, the anti-air jab into with DP. Uh, once again, he went for the re-jump! You're just auto-piloting back to your main strategy. It's definitely something to want to avoid. Yep, baits the DP though, that's nice. Close fierce. Okay, baits another DP, but he goes for... 
<laughs> he goes for the crouching light kick, crouching light punch, difficult link combo. Oh my god, FSB. Gotta baby. optimize those punishes, guys. Oh my god. Oh, it looked like he went for target combo there. He just missed it. Unfortunately, Good. eats a dragon punch for his troubles. <laughs> Now you're getting thrown in the corner. I think that's the first throw that we've seen from Gandhi. Okay, there's the FADC Ultra. Very standard Rufus stuff, but once again, no meter now for FSP. No punish on the sweep either. Oh, he's just walking back, trying to time out now. Oh, there we go. Air to air jump roundhouse. Good reaction. Good reaction. Come on. Yelling at the commentators. On, it is annoying. I will say it is annoying when you can hear the commentators at a tournament. I hate that. I hate that when you can hear them telling you all the things that you're doing wrong. But this is for sure a tilt situation. No punish on the sweep once again. Imagine how much different this round would be going if he was punishing the sweep. I can't believe he actually blocked the DP there. Block Tatsu into DP is such a classic strat because everyone tries to either punish or take their turn right there. And then they eat the dragon punch when they mess up. So uh, I definitely like the DP there. But very good block it. Missing the one frame link. I'm telling you guys, you got to have some easier combos when you're going to be dropping. It's going to be hard to land those combos. Oh, anti air down fierce. Let's go, Gandhi. Let's go. Air to air. No, no link. You can, you can link DP or EX fireball there. That's fine. EX Messiah is going to go through everything with the invincibility. Air to air. Once again, you can land whatever you're off that, but. Gandhi doesn't know. Another EX Messiah, the cross cut DP. Oh, and FSP is raging. Gandhi is. Oh, look at the commentators. They're in, they're in shambles. But Gandhi's having a grand old time. And I'm having a grand old time watching, guys. So you guys might be thinking, like, okay, all I did this whole time was criticize FSP's play. I didn't say really anything about Gandhi or the mistakes that Gandhi's making because obviously Gandhi's making about a million mistakes per second in this match, you know, doing unsafe crouch roundhouse instead of doing a jump in into something like crouching medium punch, which gives you time to hit confirm into a better combo, stuff like that, whiffing the jabs, obviously, mashing DP way too many times. You know, Gandhi is making a ton of mistakes, but the reason why I'm not really pointing those out is I feel like we've all been in FSP situation here, right? No one in the comments can tell me that you guys have never lost to someone who you feel that you deserve to beat. You feel that you're better than them, but they beat you despite playing wrong or playing unconventionally or making a lot of mistakes. You still lose. I think we've all been there. So hopefully some of the things that I've pointed out can help you guys avoid this in the future. I would say the big takeaway points here are have punishes ready for multiple things, not just the huge massively punishable dragon punches have punishes ready for the more obscure things like blocked sweep like raw ultra from point blank have those punishes ready as well it really matters and also have multiple levels of combos based on difficulty you're not always going to land your training mode combos in a real match i don't care how good a player is nobody lands the hardest combo every single time they get a hit this is true across all games. Even the best players in the world will do an easier combo and when it's a situation where they can't risk the drop. So I know there's a lot of training mode lab monsters out there who just assume that if something is optimal, it's the combo that you should do every time, but that's not always the case, guys. So hopefully you guys had fun analyzing this. I know I did. This is a classic match for a reason. It's very relatable. <laughs> For those of us who have had uh, difficult matches in tournament like this, I think it's very relatable. And it's a fun story to have the guy Gandhi, a bit of an underdog, walk away with the W. So once again, if you like the video, it really helps me out if you guys hit the like and subscribe button. And uh, let me know down in the comments if there's another match you'd like to see me analyze. I'd love to hear it. But with that, I'm going to say goodbye. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hope you guys have a good rest of your week. So long, everybody.